Well, it is now time for Talking Pints. And I'm joined by Ben Robinson. Ben from Burton, born here, raised here. And your achievements, your, your, the recognition you've received. You've had a British Empire medal, um, an MBE, member of the British Empire, a deputy lieutenant of Staffordshire, and up until a few months ago, the high sheriff of Staffordshire. Ben, you are Staffordshire aristocracy. <laughs> I thought aristocracy, I thought that was to do with breeding. Well, well, you've got the rank, titles and positions, but yeah. yes, you didn't start off as a member of the aristocracy, did you? <laughs> no, no, so I was um, born in Britain on Trent, I'm sure lots of people here know that, um, and uh, if I've achieved anything in my life, it's down to my mum, Edna, who started work at 14, working in the brewery, and there was water swilling everywhere, so she was given clogs to wear. But my mum instilled in me some great principles, like being honest, working hard, not just when you felt like it, but every day, you know. So uh, I have a lot to my mum. Yeah, the, thought, uh, the thought of wearing clogs today seems almost <laughs> extraordinary, doesn't it? But, yeah, but and, and starting work at 14 years of age, you know. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And your father? So my father was a black American GI. I inherited his first name, Clarence. Uh, Clarence Pettiford. He came from Mabane in North Carolina. But in the, my mum joined the war, and then he went back to the States. My mum corresponded with his family, so they learned all about the family. And many years later, uh, um, a black cousin came over, stayed with us. We, we learned even more about the family then. And then my mum married my stepfather when I was seven, and he, they, he brought me up. So. I mean, there were thousands of kids, weren't there, in your position? 2,000, yeah. Yeah, the yeah. GIs were over here, yeah. um, overpaid, oversexed, and over here, or whatever they said. <laughs> but it must have been, Ben, I mean, it wouldn't have been unusual to have a single-parent family, because mm. a, lot of, a lot of boys of your age fathers would have been yeah. killed yeah, yeah. in the war. Yeah. But, what but, about the prejudice but, at that time? How was it? I mean, how many people, how many people of colour, of any kind, were there in Burton in those days? So, uh, very few actually, very few. I remember we, um, we moved to the village of Rolston on Dove when I was probably seven or eight, uh, and there was no people of colour. Obviously, that was just before the, um, the migration from the Caribbean. Yeah. Um, so, no, so colour then was, was uh, you know, there weren't many coloured people around. So, yeah. So, I've learned, obviously, I started off as half caste and I became mixed race, and then. Dual heritage. I'm not quite sure what I am today. No. <laughs> yeah, the definitions, keep, decide. <laughs> the definitions keep changing. And if you use one of the old terms, suddenly you're the most awful person that's ever been born. Yeah. Did you encourage, I mean, did you encounter much difficulty? A little bit, yeah, a little bit, yeah. I think the thing is, look, um, the kids of today, they don't see colour, they see individuals, you know, and yeah. they look at individuals, it's what you stand for as an individual, you know. Obviously, when I was growing up, there was lots of prejudice, and uh, you think back to 1966, and the, the um, I, in 1966, I went to the States for the first time, also, um, and that's where I, I met Pele, when, when he played for Santos against, against um, Benfica in New York, around the Zion Stadium, and then later, at the Yankee Stadium, and uh, I met Pelly about five years ago when he came to Derby, and uh, he remembered playing in, in that stadium, that uh, nice. baseball stadium. Um, well, your love of football, I mean, you've been successful, you've gone from butcher's boy to insurance tycoon, and Burton Albion, mm. you know, you've been on and off chairman for, well, it's getting on for getting on for 50 years, isn't it? Yeah. It's getting on for 50 years. And you've had some amazing times mm. with the club. Yeah. I mean, Manchester United... Alex Ferguson, and of course, for those that don't know, for those that don't know, Burton obviously called the Brewers. I mean, it's the only name they could be called. Yeah. You know, you draw with Man U here, you get up into the championship, big association with the Cloughs as well. Yeah, yeah. So I'm sure you all know the Clough family. Um, Brian Clough is a lovely guy, a very clever guy, most su really successful manager. And um, I remember the day when it was 98 October, I had a, an insurance business in the high street, and um, one of my clients used to ring up and pretend to be somebody famous in football. So one of my um, staff said to me, Ben, um, Nigel Clough's on the phone. I said, no, no, no. I said, it's Mr. So-and-so, he's trying to wind me up. It was Nigel Clough. So, so he came, longest serving manager, and what a phenomenal um, success he brought yeah. to the town. You know. Um, for example, Manchester United, January 2006, we were non-league club, they were mighty Manchester United. 
And I thought Alex Ferguson, you know, was a great philanthropist until with 35 minutes to go, he brought Rooney and Ronaldo on. But the team that Nigel built up uh, still got a draw, nil nil draw. And we obviously had a replay at Old Trafford. That game raised a lot of money for the club, put us on the map worldwide, you know, and it was in incredible. Well, you've had a great run. You've had a great run with this. And you've done so much else with charity uh, and many other things. But a final thought, your importance here with, you know, the Burton investment plan, nearly 25 million quid's worth of government money coming to Burton. Is that why you've invited me tonight to talk about that? Well, well, I, I, about well football. I think you've done, <laughs> but you've done business. You do a lot of charity work, football, but this is important, isn't it? No. Well, can we talk about the charity first? Yeah, go on. Yeah, okay. So, um, anybody out there doesn't know, but I was got a great charity. Um, sport is very powerful. And um, today, the Minister of Sport came to the Football League meeting, uh, which took place near Chester. And his comment was he said that f football clubs like Burton Albion, they're the heartbeat of the communities all over the country. And they are. And in the latest report that the Football League produced, it confirmed that our community trust, the Burton Albion Community Trust, had delivered a social impact value of over £7.5 million, pounds, which is quite incredible. You go on the website, you have a look, well, and, and, and that's the power of sport. No, it's the power of sport, but also sport needs people like you. Clubs need people like you to make it work. Towns like this need people like you to make them work, and it's been a great pleasure. Yeah. Great pleasure, Ben, to have you here. Mm -hmm. I want you all, please, show a round of applause for what Ben's done for this town. <laughs>